based on our mandate, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are charged with the responsibility as a ministry of playing a very critical role in implementation of the overall Kenya Kwanzaa bottom-up economic transformation agenda better. As you are aware, that bottom-up economic transformation plan entails five thematic areas. There is agriculture, there is universal health coverage, there is housing, there are small and medium enterprises, and finally, we have the digital superhighway. The digital superhighway, ladies and gentlemen, was deemed appropriate to be a standalone thematic area in the Kenya Kwanzaa plan because ICT is not just an enabler to everything else that we are doing as government, but it is also a critical success factor for government moving forward. And in that regard, ladies and gentlemen, there are certain fundamental roles that we are expected to execute informed by our mandate. One, we are tasked with the responsibility of rolling out a minimum of 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable so that those parts of the country that hitherto did not have reliable and stable internet get connected. That is one thematic area. Two, we are charged with the responsibility of establishing and operationalizing a total of 25,000 free Wi-Fi hotspots. More so targeting those who are domiciled at the bottom of the economic pyramid for purposes of inclusivity and also as a means of facilitating e-commerce, which is the new frontier that we are pursuing. Three, we are expected to establish a total of 1,450 digital laboratories. Those digital laboratories have got two main objectives, one, digital skilling, and two, digital jobs. We are also expected, ladies and gentlemen, based on that infrastructure in place, to facilitate the digitization of government records on one hand and digitalization of government services on the other. So that we can have all government services on technological platforms to facilitate virtual uptake or consumption of government services by Kenyans. Again, we are also expected to initiate the process of the pursuit of digital entrepreneurship. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we are expected, as far as the ICT component is concerned, to ensure that everything that we are doing is undertaken within a framework that ensures both data privacy and data security. On the side of our broadcasting and telecommunications ambit, there are fundamental objectives that we have set out to pursue. And I did mention this from the onset when I was undergoing my vetting, that at some point in time, I would wish that my performance on behalf of the industry and on behalf of my, the ministry that I had be evaluated on the basis of revitalization of KBC, revitalization of the Postal Corporation of Kenya, the Kenya News Agency, and facilitating optimal capacity levels or performance levels of KIMC and the Kenya Yearbook. And again, we are pursuing things with great zeal, ladies and gentlemen. Against that background, may I now have the distinguished honor and privilege, ladies and gentlemen, to give you our first one-year scorecard. In the space of the digital superhighway, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned, we are expected to roll out a minimum of 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable. Our target for June 2023 was 5,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable. I'm happy to report that we have surpassed that target and we have managed as we speak to realize a rollout of 5,280 kilometers. This rollout, ladies and gentlemen, 
consists of two integral components. One, the component rolled out by government itself, and the component rolled out by the private sector. In the pursuit of our digital transformation agenda, we have stated many a time before, and I want to repeat, that we will work in partnership with the private sector to meet our goals and objectives. So as far as the initial 5,280 kilometers of fiber is concerned, as private sector players have managed to roll out 2,500 kilometers, while as government we have managed to roll out 2,780 kilometers. And in this regard, I wish to thank integral players who have made this possible, and this include Liquid Telecom, the Wanainchi Group, Safaricom, and Airtel, among others. Also, we have gone ahead, ladies and gentlemen, to map out those parts of the country that desire prioritization as far as the rollout of the 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable is concerned, all over the country. So we have got a master plan for the rollout of the fiber optic connectivity. We have done this, again, in collaboration with integral entities who have hitherto also been involved in the rollout of the fiber. And just to mention, for purposes of clarity, we have had meetings with the Kenya Power, we have had meetings with Kenya Pipeline, Ketraco Telecom, Kenya Railways, and the Kenya Pipeline Corporation. And we have agreed, with a view to achieving the 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable, we have agreed on the role, the component that each and every player is going to undertake. We have gone ahead and agreed on the timelines within which each and every one of us must meet those targets. We have gone ahead also, ladies and gentlemen, to have discussions with the county government because the, there's nothing we are going to do which will not take place in a given county government. So we have had discussions with the Council of Governors as far as the rollout of fiber connectivity is concerned. And I'm happy to report that based on those discussions, the county government have accepted to waive any costs pertaining to where lives as far as the rollout of the fiber optic cable is concerned. So we will not be having any fees being paid to the county governments in this regard. And on that note, again, I really want to thank the Council of Governors on behalf of our 47 county governments for that positive gesture. You are also aware that we have been having the government common core network uh, of ICT infrastructure, which has been in existence since 2008, ladies and gentlemen. It has now started cracking under the weight of age, and we have embarked on upscaling that. And this includes laying out uh, ducts in the central business um, zone, the upper hill area, and all the way to the Kenyatta National Hospital area, so that we are able no, uh, to uh, mitigate against disruptions of ICT infrastructure. Let me now move to the free Wi-Fi hotspots. Our target here is 25,000 free Wi-Fi hotspots all over the country. And the objective is to ensure that those Kenyans who are operating at the bottom of the economic pyramid are supported by government to get access to internet. In fact, one of the challenges that Kenyans told us before getting into government was that they wanted to, to the, the cost of data to be reduced, that the cost of data was very high. But as government, we have deliberately and consciously decided to be proactive to the extent that where we, are, we can, we are going to ensure that Kenyans get Wi-Fi for free. And in this regard, ladies and gentlemen, we have embarked on this process with great zeal. Our target was to establish and operationalize two Wi-Fi hotspots per county by June 2023. As we speak, we have surpassed this target. We are at a total of 421 free public Wi-Fi hotspots as at July 31st. And this is informed by close collaboration between us as a ministry and the county governments. In this regard, ladies and gentlemen, 
194 of those Wi-Fi's have been established in partnership with the county government in markets and around the bus terminal where most of our youth are predominantly domiciled and we want to change the paradigm by getting both the youth and our mothers and sisters who are involved in a terrinary trade within the markets getting involved or facilitated to be involved in e-commerce through this internet connectivity. We have gone ahead to establish another 172 Wi-Fi connections as part of the community innovation hubs and directly through ICTA we have established and operationalized another 55. Simultaneously we have gone ahead to identify a possible 14,690 public Wi-Fi hotspots spread evenly across the country through a partnership between the ministry and the county governments where we can go ahead and now establish the remaining Wi-Fi's with a view to realizing our target of 25,000 Wi-Fi hotspots. Again, for purposes of clarity, ladies and gentlemen, may I state that we have had meetings with the players in the private sector to fast track this process and we have agreed on how we are going to roll out the 25,000 free Wi-Fi hotspots. So we may not even go the full hog of five years. In the not too distant future, this will be water under the bridge. We shall have realized our target. And we'll keep on updating the media depending on unfolding events from time to time as the need may be. Coming to the digital hubs. The purpose of the digital hubs, ladies and gentlemen, is to ensure that with the ICT infrastructure in place, we are also correspondingly empowering Kenyans by way of digital skills so that we facilitate optimal uptake of the ICT infrastructure that we are introducing in the marketplace. That is one objective. On the flip side of it, our ultimate aim is to ensure that we empower our youths by digitals through the digital jobs because the white collar jobs are today limited. The only space where we have got enormous potential as a means of alleviating the unemployment situation in the country is through digital jobs, ladies and gentlemen. And in this regard, our target is to establish a total of 1,450 digital hubs or digital laboratories. For a start, we have started by um, initiating the Jitume programs within the TVETs. We are doing the same in schools, but eventually we have also earmarked each and every ward in this country for the establishment of a digital laboratory. And to facilitate this, we have held consultations with integral stakeholders to enable us achieve this. We have held consultations with the ICT Committee of Parliament, the ICT Committee of the Senate, and the CDF Committee of the National Assembly as well. And what we have agreed on is that we are going to work in partnership to meet these objectives. Each and every ward must have a digital hub. And the way we want to go about it is that our National Assembly, courtesy of the members of Parliament, will help us identify the sites. They will also make, and this is work in progress, um, relevant amendments to the CDF Act to facilitate our members of Parliament to meet the cost of recurrent expenditure related thereto, specifically electricity, for example, which has been a challenge. On our side, we will uh, deploy the devices. We will also uh, undertake the training for free as government. We will also go a step further and identify the jobs for our youth or link our youth to the job market. This initiative, ladies and gentlemen, has got the potential of creating about one million uh, jobs for our youth. Each digital hub can create instantly 300 jobs. If we have got one digital hub in each ward, on average, each constituency has got five wards. So that means in each constituency, we have got the potential of creating 1,500 jobs. So as opposed to a situation where the youth are migrating to Nairobi or other towns for that matter in search of jobs, we will create the jobs right there 
in the village. And this is one of the means through which as government we are going to stem or elevate rural urban migration. If anything, we will be having urban rural migration as far as the youth are concerned in search of jobs. In this regard, ladies and gentlemen, our target was to create or to establish 290 hubs annually as we speak. I'm happy to report that we have already met the threshold of 174 digital laboratories, ladies and gentlemen. The county government have also accepted to bring to the table the hitherto polytechnics, which are actually currently underutilized. We want to set up an additional digital laboratories within the polytechnics. The county government accepted to make them ready for this purpose. And again, in the same vein, we will establish the laboratories. We will, we will, we will deploy the devices and undertake the training um, within those laboratories, ladies and gentlemen. The next thing is the digitalization of government services. At the very beginning of our term, if you can remember, the government did state at the highest echelons by none other than His Excellency, the President himself, that by June this year, end of June this year, we shall have digitalized a minimum of 5,000 services. The rationale for this, ladies and gentlemen, is to ensure that most government services are available on technological platforms. This will facilitate efficiency and effectiveness in service delivery. We have so far surpassed that target as at 31st, we managed to have fully digitalized a total of 5,084 services. And we had an official launch for this purpose. But we have gone a step further and also identified a total of 9,362 services, government services that can possibly be digitalized. Our proposition, ladies and gentlemen, is that by the end of the year, all the government services shall have been digitalized. As we speak over and above the 5,084, which we are digitalized as end of June, we have partially digitalized another 2,550. As we speak, there's fundamental work in progress in finalization of the digitalization of those additional 2,500. So for purposes of clarity, let me give you the comfort that the target of fully digitalizing government services by the end of the year is realistic and achievable. If anything, we will attain it. When we took off over government, and by extension the e-citizen platform, we only had a meager 350 services aboard the e-citizen platform, ladies and gentlemen. So this is a major milestone for government. And in terms of prioritization, I'm also happy to report that we have targeted in the initial stages those sectors of the Kenyan economy that are very, very critical for service delivery from government. So we have targeted the Ministry of Health in line with the, our universal health coverage agenda. We have targeted the Ministry of Lands, more so the Lands Registry, so that we unlock the potential of what has been clogged in there. The Kenya Revenue Authority. Now, leveraging on this technology, we'll be able to bring in more people into the tax bracket and we are perhaps able to collect the same level of, re of revenue, tax revenue, at the current fiscal rates or fiscal policy, without tweaking the fiscal policies. Then transport, e-transport is another area of focus. Education, we want to go the route of e-learning. We no longer need the four walls of a classroom in the era of today to pursue education. That's another area of focus. Then border control, then citizen services, issues to do with passport. And then, of course, the cabinet. We have already also achieved fundamental results in that regard. Allow me now to go to the area of digital skills and correspondingly digital jobs, because the two are like Siamese twins. Again, as a ministry, ladies and gentlemen, we have embarked on two major programs. The AJIRA program, which has been ongoing, 
and the Jitume program which we have newly introduced. We have managed through stakeholder alliances and partnerships, ladies and gentlemen, to secure a donation of 23,000 digital devices for deployment for purposes of digital skilling. And our intention in this regard, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is to utilize these devices to have a critical mass of Kenyans um, acquire <coughs> optimal levels of ICT skills and also empower our youth for jobs. We have gone ahead, ladies and gentlemen, to deploy these devices in 77 TVETs, a total of 6,700 devices in 77 TVETs, four universities which have received 400 units each, 21 schools which have received 100 virtual desktops each, and we have been doing this up to and including yesterday, but one. We have gone ahead and deployed 100 virtual desktops in eight ministries, departments, integral ministries, departments, and agencies. We have also supported the county governments, and again, so far in this regard, as far as official commissioning is concerned, launch is concerned, we have gone ahead and launched 34 sites. A total of 8,159 devices have been deployed in a total of 112 institutions so far. So that is as far as the digital skilling uh, program is concerned. And we have managed through this process, ladies and gentlemen, to create, as we speak, a total of 109 digital jobs. Concurrently, we have managed to train a total of 336,000 youth on digital jobs, courtesy of the AJIRA program and the JITUME program. In the same vein, we are at advanced stage of operationalization of KAIST, the Kenya Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, which is going to be a special purpose vehicle for purposes of digital skilling, ladies and gentlemen. We have also managed to operationalize the Kenya National Open University, which is going to be a virtual university, the first of its kind in this country. And I'm happy again to report that tomorrow but one, the Kenya National Open University will be officially commissioned by none other than His Excellency the President himself, and this university, ladies and gentlemen, will be domiciled at our Konza Technopolis. The other issue or area of focus is digital entrepreneurship. You know, if we are digitalizing all government services and telling the public that you don't need to visit government offices to consume government services, then the question that comes to mind is whether or not we have got a critical mass of Kenyans with smart enabled devices. And the answer as we speak is that there is a gap in the market. We have got inadequate levels. So as opposed to waiting to be reactive in a proactive manner, because we have been thinking in many facets simultaneously, we have gone a step further to partner with the private sector, ladies and gentlemen, to embark on the assembly of smart enabled phones in the Kenyan market. This is work in progress at a very advanced stage. Based on feasibility studies, we are going to be able to roll out cheap, smart enabled phones in the Kenyan market at a unit cost of about $40 within the next one month. That will be a major milestone, ladies and gentlemen and we'll move subsequently from local assembly to local manufacture of the handsets themselves. Yeah? And then we move to the next level of local manufacture of uh, computer software. With all this infrastructure in place, again, ladies and gentlemen, the direction we are going as a country is e-commerce. There's no point of continuing with business as usual, where we have to have physical meetings between the source of raw materials and the market. So in this regard, ladies and gentlemen, we have gone ahead and developed an e-commerce strategy so that we take advantage of the critical ICT infrastructure 
that we are introducing in the Kenyan market. So far, as a nablus of e-commerce, we have got 442 public Wi-Fi hotspots. We already have a total of 22,000 kilometers of fiber installed, 179 complete and functional innovation hubs countrywide, and 112 Jitume laboratories. We have gone ahead further, ladies and gentlemen, to create awareness among the Kenyan public. And as we speak, I'm happy to report that as a means of pursuing our digital economy agenda, we have created awareness among 53% of Kenyan adults and 56% of Kenyan youth as far as our digital transformation agenda is concerned. So in the not too distant future, we will be leveraging on technological platforms for purposes of e-commerce. It does not make sense in the era of today to have a direct interface between the seller of a commodity and the buyer. The other issue that we need to discuss is whether or not there is still rationale for Kenyans to physically visit government offices with the amount of technological infrastructure and digital skilling program that we have in place. Does it make sense? If all services are available on the e-citizen platform on one hand, and on the other hand we have got a commensurate level of digital skills to facilitate optimal uptake of the ICT infrastructure, then why do we have to tell Kenyans that they still have to continue physically visiting government offices? In this regard, ladies and gentlemen, we have embarked on the process of pursuing a digital identity for all Kenyans. When we talk about digital identity, people start thinking about the Oduma number. And I want to clarify that the digital identity we are talking about is not the same thing as the Oduma number, both in terms of objective and context. The Oduma number was meant to facilitate the development of an electronic population database. What we are saying today is that we need a virtual means through which government can confirm that you are whom you claim to be. And if the answer is in the affirmative, then Kenyans can consume government services from the comfort of wherever they are without physically visiting government services informed by one's biodata. And that is the direction that we are going, to have a digital identity for all Kenyans. We have done quite a bit of benchmarking. It has happened in Estonia, it has happened in Belgium, it has happened in Pakistan, it has happened in India. These are best case global examples that we can benchmark with. And Kenya can in no way, ladies and gentlemen, be an exception in this regard. Let me also clarify that when it comes to pass, we will not force any Kenyan to take a digital identity. No. The onus will be on you to decide whether or not you want to consume government services through your digital identity based on your biodata or you want to physically visit government offices. If the services are available technologically, you have got the commensurate level of digital skilling and government is able to make at your disposal a digital identity, the probability that most Kenyans will opt for consuming government services using the digital identity. That is what India has done, for example. We were in India the other day, and they told us that when they introduced the digital identity, one, uh, they did not force people to take the digital identity. People opted for the digital identity because it was the most logical thing to do. So that is the direction that we are going to go, ladies and gentlemen. Then the other issue is the national addressing system, where we have also made fundamental progress. To facilitate e-commerce, ladies and gentlemen, we have developed a draft policy and bill on the national addressing system we have had stakeholder engagements. We have gotten comments from stakeholders which have been incorporated in that bill and policy. What we are now moving towards is the step of stakeholder validation, 
before taking it to the next level of cabinet approval. And in the same vein, to augment this, we have gone ahead to undertake the Nairobi cadastral mapping, complete with 241 blocks, which will facilitate our e-commerce strategy. Digitalization of cabinet. Cabinet has been undertaking its proceedings through manual processes and paper. And based on partnership between our ministry and the cabinet office, I'm again happy, ladies and gentlemen, to report that we have achieved fundamental progress in this regard, as at January 2023, all cabinet meetings are now being undertaken virtually. And to facilitate this, we have established, installed, and operationalized 92 video conferencing facilities in all government ministries and state departments, the presidency, and the office of the prime cabinet secretary. That is as far as our digital transformation agenda is concerned. But while doing this, for purposes of comfort, may I also state that we have got an elaborate risk mitigation framework to ensure that we will have uh, proper uh, mitigation measures against any acts of cyber security. We have gone ahead, ladies and gentlemen, to establish and op uh, operationalize the Office of the Data Commissioner. The mandate of the Office of the Data Commissioner is to ensure that within our digitalization agenda, we are also ensuring adequate levels of both data privacy and data security. We have gone ahead also, ladies and gentlemen, to establish a multifaceted government team that on a continuous basis is undertaking or scanning the operational environment to be able to determine the patterns, because this is a global issue, the patterns of cybersecurity and what we need to do in a proactive manner to have an elaborate risk mitigation framework around our digitalization agenda. So we are on the right trajectory. And let me also, now that we are on this, reaffirm what I've stated before, that the recent incident that we had was not a case of hacking the e-citizen platform. It was a case of an attempted cyber attack. Hacking means you succeed illegally to get into a technological platform that does not belong to you for ill intentions or malicious intentions, and then you go there in and adulterate the data that is domiciled within that platform. That is not what happened. What happened is that there was an attempted attack on the e-citizen platform, among other platforms, including but not limited to those held in the hands of the private sector. But because we already had an elaborate risk mitigation framework uh, around that space, it was unsuccessful. So I want to assure Kenyans that the data that is held by government on their behalf is secure, that incident did not lead to any infringement of the personal data of Kenyans. So the privacy and security of the data in position of government is very much upheld. And apart from ensuring that we address that challenge, that incident which we have fully addressed, we have now reverted back to optimal capacity utilization levels as far as the services on the e citizen platform is concerned. We have gone ahead to ensure that moving forward, we have got an elaborate risk mitigation framework around our digitalization agenda. So we are going the full hog. We are going to pursue this to a logical conclusion, ladies and gentlemen. The other issue that comes to mind is how we are going to fund all these programs. I'm happy to report that we have managed to secure two integral components of funding, one from the World Bank, a threshold of 570 million US dollars, yeah, courtesy of the Kenya Digital Economy Acceleration Program. We have also managed to negotiate and have secured for purposes of facilitating universal access to connectivity an additional 5 billion shillings from the Universal Service Fund to support our digital superhighway agenda on one hand, 
and the digitalization of government services ambit on the other. That is as far as our ICT and digital economy component is concerned, ladies and gentlemen. On the side of the broadcasting and telecommunication mandate of the ministry, we have embarked on the process of revitalizing the operations of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. We are upgrading the infrastructure. We have been having a challenge of decaying infrastructure. We have embarked on the process of reviewing the content and re-engineering the business model of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. And in this regard, ladies and gentlemen, may I report that modernization of our TV center is ongoing to improve both sound and signal quality that has been put to tender already at a cost of 170 million shillings. The information is available in the public portal. We have managed to also tender for the purchase of an outside broadcasting van at a cost of 120 million shillings for purposes of transparency. Let me also state the figure. We have also tendered for the purchase of the radio OB van that is work in progress. We have embarked on negotiations with the Spanish government, ladies and gentlemen, with a view to getting direct foreign capital inflow injection to facilitate the upgrade of our infrastructure, the KBC infrastructure, ladies and gentlemen. We have embarked on the process of migration from medium wave to FM, and in this regard, we have already installed FM transmitters at Masabit, Lodwa, Webuye, Migori, Kapenguria, Bomet, Malindi, Nyambene, and Nyeri. We have also managed to increase FM radio coverage through the installation of an additional 20 additional transmitters, ladies and gentlemen. The first batch of 10 transmitters have already been procured and is arriving in the country in September 2023. As far as the content and business model of KBC is concerned, again, we are focusing on partnerships and alliances. We have managed to secure sponsorship deals with regard to the World Rugby Championships and also coverage of the Kenyan Premier League by way of free-to-air rights. These have been successfully negotiated by the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation. So what I'm saying in short, ladies and gentlemen, that we are determined to revitalize the operations of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation so that this legacy broadcasting entity can punch at its rightful weight in the marketplace. Moving to Postal Corporation of Kenya, this is another area of focus. We are very clear that the only way to revitalize the operations of Kenya, uh, Postal Corporation of Kenya is to go the direction of e-commerce. And in this regard, ladies and gentlemen, we have embarked on an ambitious program of diversification of revenue streams for the Postal Corporation of Kenya, which have so far generated substantial amounts of money as a means of not just re-engineering the operations of that entity, but to inform the turnaround strategy for this giant corporation. So Posta, as we speak today, has managed to secure a working relationship with immigration. We are doing one-stop service from order to passport to tracking last mile delivery of passports. We have also embarked on the process of ensuring that within the e-citizen portal, we'll have postal addresses and codes embedded therein to facilitate digitalization or digitization of postal records and the digitalization of postal services. We have scaled up the services with other ministries, departments, and agencies. As we speak, we have managed to secure a 600 million logistics service uh, arrangement with the um, uh, IEBC. We have also managed to secure new contracts uh, through our EMS, expedited mail services, which has enabled us to increase the revenue threshold from 600 million in the last financial year to 900 million in the current year. And we have also embarked on last mile delivery of medical supplies and facilities, ladies and gentlemen. And one um, 
um, aspect of this is the delivery of mosquito nets in collaboration with KEMSA, which is going to give us also an um, expected um, amount of 295 million shillings. So what we are saying in short, ladies and gentlemen, is that the direction we are going is to ensure that POSTA pursues e-commerce. And we want to position POSTA as the organization of choice in this regard. There has also been the issue of how Kenyans communicate with the government. How do we leverage on technology to facilitate efficiency and effectiveness in interaction between members of the public and government? In this regard, ladies and gentlemen, again, proactively, consciously, and deliberately, we have decided to establish a national contact, contact center. The national contact center will be a point from which citizens interact with the government across various channels. We are soon going to come up with a unique number which Kenyans can use to facilitate 24-7 and 365 days in a year availability to support citizens in seeking interaction with the government, including but not limited also to filing complaints with the government and facilitating reception of those complaints with the relevant government agencies and ensuring that the feedback loop gets to the common citizen within the shortest time possible. And the piloting of this is already undergoing. The next thing is digitalization, uh, digital signatures. If we have got services on technological platforms, we have commensurate level of skills, we have got the digital identity. We don't want a situation where government operations and services will be stalled through unnecessary bureaucracy because officers are not available in their offices or staff have to physically visit government offices to consume government services, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, we have embarked on the process of operationalizing digital signatures across all facets of government. All that we intend to do, whether it is on the ICT and digital economy side or on the broadcasting and telecommunication side, ladies and gentlemen, must be an anchor on an enabling policy, legal, and regulatory framework. And in this regard, ladies and gentlemen, through a participatory approach, we have always stated that anything that we are going to do, we know the operational environment is not static, will continuously engage relevant stakeholders depending on emerging issues from time to time so that their integral views are integrated in the initiatives that we are going to take. And with a view to ensuring that what we are doing is anchored on the sound legal and policy frameworks, we have been having uh, consultations with various stakeholder segments, relevant stakeholder segments, and we have embarked on major policy initiatives as follows. One, the National Policy on Public Relations and Communications Management. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of this policy is to professionalize information sharing between institutions and organizations and the public, to create a statutory self-regulatory mechanism through which this sector can regulate itself. And in this regard, we have developed the policy, we have submitted to cabinet, is now waiting cabinet approval in the not too distant future. The other policy is the national addressing system, which had alluded to earlier for purposes of facilitating e-commerce. Again, we have undertaken stakeholder engagement in this regard, validation has been done, we are now progressing this to the next stage of cabinet approval. The other policy is the National ICT Policy Guidelines 2020. We have presented this to cabinet and an integral component of this policy, ladies and gentlemen, is to amend or remove the 30% equity participation rule required for licensing of ICT service providers. We had got a requirement in the ICT uh, policy guidelines that any f investor in the ICT sector had to acquire a 30% local component before getting into the Kenyan market. This rule has been there on paper, but Kenyans have not been able to uptake 30% local component in these ICT companies. So it has not been useful. What has been happening 
is that tenderpreneurs have been creating unnecessary roadblocks on the path of private sectors who want to invest in the Kenyan space. Yeah? That you need to get 30% shareholding. Somebody does not want to put in money in the enterprise but wants to be a director on paper. And we are saying we can't continue like this because this is scaring investors. The only leeway that we had was for those entities every year now to apply to the cabinet secretary to grant a waiver. We cannot continue like that, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm saying that no single individual in the name of a cabinet secretary, starting with myself, should have that discretionary power to decide whether or not a foreign investment company is going to continue operating in Kenya. We must anchor that in law. And in this regard, we have decided to waive that 30% requirement. Foreign companies can now invest in ICT sector without that roadblock. This has been approved by cabinet, and we are now progressing for gazettement. The other issue is the access to information policy, ladies and gentlemen. And the objective here is to create a basis for implementation or operationalization of the Access to Information Act. This is before cabinet waiting approval, which I believe will be done in the not too distant future. We also have standalone cabinet memos, which we have managed to prepare based on consultations between our ministry, the National Treasury, and the Attorney General. They are now foolproof, and I'm happy to report that we are now progressing to forward to the cabinet a cabinet memo on the revitalization of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, an elaborate one at that. A cabinet memo on the revitalization of the Postal Corporation of Kenya for purposes of sustainability. And a cabinet memo on re-engineering of the government advertising agency. Again, when we get to that point as to how we are revitalizing these organizations, we will call you people, members of the Fourth Estate again, and explain to you what we are doing, because we want to carry everybody along. We are also progressing with the Public Relations and Communication Management Bill, whose intention is to establish a legal framework to regulate the manner in which professionals conduct their practice. This is awaiting cabinet approval. The public participation phase of it has already been undertaken. There is also the issue of the Kenya Information and Communication Act Bill. Public participation is done. The bill is being refined for purposes of onward transmission to cabinet. The ICTA bill, ICTA has been operating on the basis of a legal mandate. We are saying we need to, considering the fundamental mandate of ICTA, we want to anchor ICTA on a strong legal foundation. In fact, for purposes of clarity, even the most of the digital infrastructure agenda that we are rolling out as a government is being undertaken by ICTA. So we want to anchor ICTA on a strong legal foundation, and therefore that is what has informed that bill. The bill is currently in the early stages of drafting, and we will be making progress in that regard. There is also the Kenya Information and Communication Act bill to ensure that the act aligns to emerging issues in the operational environment. That bill has been formulated. The stakeholder engagement has been finalized. We are moving to the next stage. There is the National Addressing System of Kenya Bill, which I alluded to earlier. Public participation is now complete. The KIMC Bill. We also want to enhance the performance of the Kenya Institute of Mass Communication through by ensuring that it is, its operations is anchored on a sound legal foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, let me just explain to Kenyans what the end game looks like. Because it's not going to be business as usual, based on the initiatives that we are undertaking. One, we must prepare for a paperless government. We are not going to have any manual processes in government. Everything will be available on virtual platforms with a view to enhancing efficiency and effectiveness in service delivery. We are going to have a digital identity for all Kenyans, to facilitate consumption of government services by Kenyans from the comfort of wherever they are. We are going to have e-signatures with a view again to enhancing the level of efficiency and effectiveness interaction between members of the public and the government. 
The net effect of all this, ladies and gentlemen, is that we will be able to, at macro level, bring in more Kenyans into gainful economic activity. We will be able to bring in more Kenyans, therefore, into the tax bracket. We will be able, as government, to collect more revenue, have, acquire or attain enhanced levels of domestically generated revenue so that we are able to service our external debt and have adequate surplus to facilitate both our current and development expenditure. In all this, ladies and gentlemen, as a ministry, we are working together with the industry and all integral stakeholders. We want to carry everybody on board. And I want to appeal to you, including members of the fourth estate, to help us augment efforts of government in effective realization of this digital transformation agenda. If we go in that direction, we should be able to position Kenya effectively as the ICT hub of Africa on one hand, and also on the global stage strategically by way of comparative advantage. Thank you very much. May God bless you.